We're a bank, or we're building a hierarchical monetary system and a, the foundation of a global decentralized and autonomous exchange. I know it sounds complicated, but we'll get to how we got to that. So, my name is Eyal Herzog. Uh, I'm in the space of internet consumer application for, I would say, 20 years now. I started uh, being inspired by ICQ, another Israeli company. It was a great success back in 98. And, uh, I started a company called Contact Networks. It was a social network. Um, it was an application that you actually downloaded. After that, uh, you know, everything crashed in 2000, and uh, I started a company called Metacafe. It was a video sharing site. Anyone uh, used Metacafe here? Yeah, great. So I'm sure you're not using it anymore because there was an, another company that came out at the same time. Uh, you might have heard of them. YouTube actually won that game uh, bigly. Trying to figure out why that happened, we were focusing on bringing the best video in the world to our uh, users, and we actually managed to do that. And we saw traffic growing to 50 million monthly users. It was great. But we missed, we had a one big miss. And our big miss is this, the long tail. We missed it. We didn't understand the long tail. Actually, the theory was not even written. But YouTube catered the long tail much, much better. And we discovered that 99.9% .9 of the video traffic is in the long tail. Only 0.1% is in the greatest hits. So that left quite a scar. And uh, <clears throat> continuing uh, in my life, I actually started to be a big user of the long tail, learning, uh, you know, watching videos on YouTube and learning about how the monetary system in the world works. And I was like, is that real? Is that really how it works? I was amazed. That was in 2010. In 2011, I discovered something amazing. I discovered Bitcoin. And, you know, being in the space of user-generated content, for me, Bitcoin was a user-generated currency. I saw the first user-generated currency. I actually saw many, many more that tried to do the same. And I figured out, okay, there's, there's going to be a long tail here as well. Maybe I learned something in Metacafe. And uh, we started a company, and we started work on different projects, trying to build user-generated currencies, to let people create their own currencies. And uh, we started experimenting. It was actually a great success. We launched the first community in 2013. Uh, for a local mom's group in Israel, uh, we issued currency called Hearts. It quickly got to 1,000 transactions per day, uh, like people buying goods and services with that user-generated currency that this community created from the cell. That was just one community. We actually created more. And we started to hear complaints because people were like, OK, but I have tokens in this community, but I want to use that in th that community. I cannot do that. So we started to think, you know, how can we do that? We had a problem. We, we, we didn't know how to connect because each community was its own currency with its own monetary policy. We started to think about it, and we figured out we had the, the problem of double coincidence of wants. Anyone know about the double coincidence of wants problem here? You heard about it? It's not very famous. It's in, the, in economics. And it's basically the problem that money solves for barter. So with barter, you need the double coincidence of wants in order for a deal to take place. But with money, you actually solve that problem, and, and you replace this barter activity with two things, with buying and selling. So now it's much easier to trade because a technology called money solved the double coincidence of wants. And this problem of double coincidence of wants is what prevented this community to connect with each other because we couldn't just set up an exchange. There was just not enough volume in that exchange. There were like, yeah, I don't know, thousands of, of, of users in, in each community, maybe 10,000, not enough for liquidity. And we started to think, how can we solve that? At that point, we got inspired by something called Bancor, actually a proposal by Keynes after World War II. And uh, it was a supranational currency that would connect all the currencies in the world. So every currency will have like an exchange rate to that supranational currency. It was an amazing offer. I think, you know, today you hear the, uh, the, the governor of the Bank of, of uh, China saying, Zhao, saying that too bad we didn't go for that. Because what we did go for was this other offer. Let's just use dollars. Don't worry. It's backed by gold, so using those just like having gold. And that actually worked pretty fine until 71, uh, when we discovered what is counterparty risk with regards to backing up a currency. We then found another problem that after we started connecting the communities and created reserves and allowed 
communities to trade with each other. We did a lot of experiments. We saw a lot of deals between the communities. But we, we discovered that we still have a problem that those communities and those currencies are disconnected from the outside world. Uh, people cannot exchange that to dollars or shekels, and that, that's our local currency. And we started to think about how we can do that. So we started looking at the crypto world, and MasterCoin was starting to kind of grow. And we hosted the first MasterCoin hackathon in Israel. MasterCoin didn't work out, uh, but then came Ethereum. And when, when we started to kind of look into Ethereum and see you know, how we can use that in order to kind of work on our vision of, of, of user-generated currencies that actually can exchange with each other, we started to understand that there's something much, much bigger that we can do here with Ethereum, much bigger, that we can actually uh, create a model which allow currencies to be interconnected to each other and allow them to be decentralized because it was all centralized and all centrally managed and with, with a governor and, and monetary policy. But we figure out that we can do something that is actually decentralized. And this is where the Bancor protocol uh, was born actually last summer. We, uh, we named it in honor of the Bangor proposal. And I want to let you know how it works. It's based on very simple principle. I'm going to give you a flow. So let's say I'm starting a new coin. Uh, we'll call it new coin. And it has a reserve on, in Ether, which is 10%. We define it as CRR, constant reserve ratio of 10%. Uh, we'll see how it's going to work in a second. So it means that the new coin actually holding, that the contract is holding uh, Ether. So in this case, let's say there's uh, 1,000 Ether in the reserve, and there is 10K uh, supply of the coin. So the market cap is 10,000 because uh, you can easily calculate it. You have 1,000 Ether in the reserve and uh, you divide it by the CRR. The market cap of the coin is 10,000. So the unit price, if I have 10,000 supply, the unit price is one Ether per new coin. Now let's imagine Alice that want to convert. And I'm using this, the term convert, not exchange, because exchange implies other party. Here there's no other party. It's just Alice and new coin. Uh, and Alice want to convert 100 Ether to new coins. So after she sends those Ether to the contract and she gets 100 new coins from the contract. Now the reserve is 1,100 uh, Ether and the supply is 10,100. So now if I want to calculate the unit price, the unit price is 11,000 divided by 10,100. So the unit price right now has went up. So the price went up because Alice bought the coin, which is what would happen in a regular exchange, by the way. And the opposite works as well. If she would sell, then the price will go down. Is it, I mean, that's, that's a simple formula. The price is the reserve divided by the supply multiplied by the reserve ratio, F, we call that. Now, to be accurate, we actually worked on these formulas that allow you to pre-calculate the price changes for any amount. So that those formula would actually give you the same amount if you buy, if Alice bought 100 coins in one transaction or perform 100 transactions buying one coin each time, she will get exactly the same rate eventually, the total rate, because this function takes into account the price changes that comes from buying. And then you can start working on models like this. Now this is a model where we're looking at Ethereum as the blockchain platform token and what we call a network token called BGT, which is a token that has 21% Ether reserve. And meaning that it creates 79% of new credit. So whenever someone buys BGT, it creates new credit, but also increases the reserve. Now, you can actually have other coins that are backed by BGT. Therefore, it's a hierarchical uh, monetary system. Now, another interesting example is what I call the ETF example. Now, the ETF example is meaning that you have a currency that is backed by other currency or token, backed by other token, but the total CRR is 100%. If the total CR is 100%, it means that this token doesn't create new credit. It's actually fully, fully backed, and it's a container of, of, of other currencies. And in this uh, example, we have a, a, an ETF that is 50% backed by Go, uh, Digix Gold and 50% backed by Ether. Now, this ETF allows 
using the formulas that uh, I showed um, uh, earlier. And you can actually read about it in our white paper to see like exact scenario. But these ETFs allow anyone to buy the ETF for Ether or four digits or sell the ETF for Ether and four digits. Now you ask yourself, so how, how can you make sure that the price would be exactly uh, the right and uh, that it will hold 50% in ETF and 50% in digits? Actually, it's quite a simple answer because when the price changes, and it's not reflecting the market price, it gives incentives for arbitrage player to actually come and fix that this is like the best oracle in the world. They're gonna make money by using those price differences just like they make money today in stock markets. The same mechanism, not just they're gonna make money if the price between Digix and Ether get, get to be different than the market price, they're actually uh, providing the supply in order to make sure there's enough Ether and enough digits. Because if, some, if I go to this ETF and I, I, I push in a lot of Ether and I take digits, I actually push the price of Ether up and the price of digits down. So now someone has an incentive to push digits into this ETF, take Ether out, rebalance it, rebalance the price. A decentralized exchange where you have end users uh, that can hold currencies and exchange them. Again, they don't need a second party. You have token issuers that uh, could be asset tokenizers, could be uh, uh, that uh, everyone is talking about, could be ETF creators and banker enabled tokens, which are essentially intrinsically tradable token. Now the banker enabled token, this is what really allows the long tail because you don't need sufficient volume. Like today you need, you know, there's a big party, we're doing an IPO and we hope that this new, new thing will, uh, or ICO, IPO, you know, works the same way. And we hope that it will remain liquid here. It's not a problem. You can have a token that one guy buy today, another guy sell within a week. In two weeks, someone else buys it and it's stable because the number of people or the, the amount that being bought or sold is the same. And of course, the arbitrage agent that are active today in other markets can active here. Main benefits, continuous liquidity. It's always liquid. Uh, it has no counterparty risk. You exchange with a contract. You have no spread. It's the same price. If you want to buy, you want to sell, enjoy the same price. And there's no fees except the platform fees, which are like, you know, Ethereum fees that are part of it. We have a draft. We just released a draft on Monday. We've been working on, on it for a long time. We really want to get the feedback uh, from the community. We have uh, uh, the smart contracts uh, that we actually uploaded just yesterday. And uh, looking forward to work with the community and see how we can improve that and uh, create a great global uh, exchange and hierarchical monetary system for the benefit of all and the long tail of currencies. Thank you very much.